What's going down everybody? Back in the shop working on Project 3rd Gen again. Today we're going to be doing a rear disc brake inversion. We're getting rid of the old drums out back and going to a disc brake. So I found myself always looking for parts. You know, this the whole, the whole purpose of this car is supposed to be a budget track build. Um, I found some bare uh, big brake Jordan Slaughter rotors. So it's a C4 conversion. So everything's based off of Corvette C4 brakes. Um, they are from bare. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a rear disc brake conversion, getting rid of the old drums, getting all the disc brakes on, cleaning everything up. Uh, I will be doing a video where I'm installing fourth gen Camaro booster and master cylinder, just to get rid of, you guys know third gen, that pop top with the rubber gasket that always leaks in my videos and makes my car smoke. So I'm gonna be getting rid of that, going to a fourth gen, and then I also have the matching bare brakes for up front. So. Let's, uh, let's get these drums off this thing because it's been on here long enough and get going. Here we go, bring you in. So I got some of the stuff sitting up here. So like I said, everything is dirty. Uh, the, from what I was told, they were put on the car and they were building a track car. The car sat for four years, five years. Then they pulled the brakes off, threw them in a tote. So, I mean, you can see the pads. Everything's just dirty. Uh, like I said, it's like... These are bare brake, but it's like a Corvette style upgrade. Um, they're dirty. I'm gonna get them cleaned up. I'll probably powder coat all the, or I mean, uh, sandblast the brackets, paint them all. But it came with all the hardware, so four there, two there, and braided lines. Uh, I got all brand new crush washers. That way, all that stuff's brand new. But the lines are in great shape. Um, so yeah, let's let's get over to the car and start getting this thing torn apart. Got also gonna be uh, throwing in the old proportioning valve because. This bad motor scooter was a disc brake, drum brake car, so proportioning valve's not gonna work. So we went and got the Wilwood adjustable one. So that'll be one other thing we're gonna be doing. But let's get the wheel off, get the car in the air, and get to ripping. It's all off. I did have to get the old Sawzall out and cut the uh, the bolt that holds the top of the dust cover on and that stud, whatever you want to call this, whoever this guy is, he was not coming off. He had to get Sawzall. But there's all the garbage we pulled off, all the springs and garbage. Now let's get the uh, bracket on here. I'm going to use uh, this bottom hole and of course two for two. I mean I'm four for four. Snapped off all the uh, all four bolts. None of them came out. So if you're gonna be doing something like this and your car's crusty like mine, just be prepared. Just go ahead and saws all that bolt off, and then just be prepared. You're gonna snap those off, but it'll be all right. Just go ahead and do your pilot through the bolt or the stud, uh, and then just step it up. Just use one of those bolts as your alignment one. Get it all centered. You're gonna be fine. It's rusty. It's metal. You can weld it back together if you got a welder. So I got this disassembled. I got everything marked out, used the old die grinder to put my guidelines. That was smart, worked really good. So that's where I'm gonna cut the top of this off because we don't need it anymore. Also said I was gonna go ahead and paint these bad boys. So those are all painted back up. So that's gonna be a sandblasted them, painted them. Those will be ready to go back on when I reassemble. Get on over the other side and get cracking. Fresh uh, blue fire on here and some of the most scratched safety glasses I could find. So let's go ahead and get this thing cut off. All right, well we got the bracket or the, the ta axle tab all cut, put some paint on there so that way it won't rust. Now we're gonna go ahead, pull this here axle seal because it's the next thing I gotta do is I'm gonna put the new seal on and then we can reassemble everything. This is just, just so we don't got the drip drips, you know, just leave that, it'll be fine. So we're just gonna take these big boys, stick them in there and just give it a bippity boppity. bring you in so figured I'd explain myself I, I didn't have directions so we we won it winged it and what I did is I just evened up the gap around the axle tube and lined up this bottom stud hole that broke off went ahead 
chased that stud, drilled it out, stepped it up, got that bolt on, did the cross bolt, took the old vice grips off, got this bad boy. So now I have to drill that final fourth one out. And then we're going to go ahead and make our mark to cut this big old tab off the top of the axle. Then I'll do my seal and we'll put it back together. Maybe put a little spray paint on there, make it look fancy. But we're almost done. Basically race car again. to bring in not waste too much time so there's whoop, the one that I cleaned up there's the one not cleaned up well I had some technical difficulties so the last video shut off and I didn't realize it so all I did is hit it with the old wire wheel and then hit it with the 80 grit on the old sander bam, bam, knocked it all down but now I'm gonna bring you in on the old quick quick masking had some of those here bubble wrap cut it out the inside diameter just made a little template there reusable and then i just threw a four pieces of tape to hold it down and you can see look at that nice and tight no blow over all i did is just sprayed against it psh, psh, dusted her in gave it a couple coats finished product i think it looks pretty good apparently there was a little little uh fish eye there but no no bother rim will cover that everything mocked back up and bolted on there like i said should i paint the caliper shoot a comment you think it looks good car's gonna stay blue i think it looks good i think it looks clean sanitary looks good with the suspension when we get the uh diff cover on there we'll have you know it'll look i think it'll look good but shoot me a comment what do you think you paint them don't paint them leave them it doesn't matter tom you worry about painting stuff too much all right, so one step I didn't show when I was disassembling this. Uh, obviously, if you're tearing into this, you've probably torn apart and we were in before. But if you haven't, I'll show you. So there's a bolt here at the bottom. This bolt holds in this pin. This pin holds all the planetary gears in. Once you remove this pin, get this bad boy out of here. Um, these gears all move, but you can push your axle shaft in, and then oh, get that in. Then you can put your C clip, which is this little guy. There's that one. Slides on like that. I push the axle back. That holds that, and then when you put the pin back in, it allow it doesn't allow for the axle to slide back inboard so that way you don't have to worry about the clip falling off bob's your uncle put that bad boy back in there tighten it up throw a little loctite on there and uh ride as rain so we're gonna go ahead and get both c clips in and then uh, we can get the diff cover buttoned up get the new cover on bigger bring you in on just you know went to the parts store got new axle seals had to get some new bolts, a small sidetrack. So if you didn't know, uh, if you got a tractor supply or something like that in your town, my tractor supply sells bolts by the pound. It's actually a really, really good deal. But went to get um, new diff cover bolts. There's an old one. Figured, you know, go oh, half of an inch bigger. Got to get through this big old diff cover. Well, those still aren't long enough because the threads don't start for like another eighth of an inch quarter of an inch so we're gonna have to go back and get some more bolts to get the diff cover on but whatever helpful hint bolts by the pound real progress now passenger side is on i got diff cover on and now i just got i got that uh, emergency brake routed i need to get this one routed and then we need to plug plug connector connectorize hook up hook up hook up to your brake up there and then we're done with this portion so let me get that going and then I'll walk you through bippity boppity everything basically done. Looks way better with that diff cover on there though. I don't know what do you think. Back in here, so e-brake is connected, diff covers on, 
everything's on. Uh, lines are ran. They are not landed on the brake lines yet. I obviously haven't bled them yet because I still have to do the fourth gen master and uh, booster swap. So no sense in bleeding them. Uh, one little helpful hint when hooking up the e-brake, um, I got the one side on easy. I could not get the other side on. So what I ended up doing with my style brakes is you just push that e-brake in, collapse that just enough to give you a little slack, stick something in there on both sides. And that gave me enough length to uh, get the cables on. So I wasn't able to use the stock mount up there. So I ended up just doing double zip tie right here next to that bracket. Hopefully that works. If not, I'm gonna have to put a bracket on the rear end. So I'll just check it uh, next time after I go to the track, make sure it's still on there. Um, I will be getting tabs, like I said, for the brake lines. I'll be mounting the tabs up here, rebending the factory line, plugging it in, Bob's your uncle. Uh, I probably will eventually reline the top of the rear end, do a new T and then um, do a new soft line back to there or a braided line back to there just to get rid of all these old uh, rubber hoses and just make it all make it all new but that's that stay tuned i got more like i said i'm gonna be doing a uh, part two all right so i figured i'd bring in real quick just a little a little pluggy here um i needed these brackets for my braided lines so the braided line goes in there and then you put your clippity doodah on there so I went on Amazon, I went on a couple other places trying to find them. They went like 15 bucks for two tabs and two clips. I bought nine clips or 10 clips for six bucks and I'm just making my tabs out of some sheet metal. So this is one that I already made. There's a transfer, take it to the bandsaw, zip it out. I just used my step up bit, stepped it up to the right size, it clips right on. I'll put these onto my rear end and then I can finish up those brake lines. And it cost me six bucks instead of 15 bucks and about 15 minutes of my time. So yeah, food for thought. I got to share the wins and the losses with you. So I had to do two more tacks, tack on those brackets and uh, dad's welder was out of gas. So I had to get the mini bike, go grab my spare bottle, ride the mini bike over. Luckily I had it. So let's get this thing uh, welded up. You know, you can't win them all. Part two is going to be doing the fourth gen master cylinder and booster so I can get rid of the old leaky top. I mean, for third gen people, you guys know those masters are not fun, uh, especially on the track. So I'm going to go ahead and be converting that to fourth gen. So I'll make a video on that and then be putting in my Willwood proportioning valve for this disc brake upgrade. Uh, but just kind of overall, it went really good. I just came up here and worked on it, you know, a couple nights. Um, then you get crazy amount of fabrication you got a grinder and some drill bits i mean you can definitely do it in your driveway it was nice having it on the lift right there at eye level um you do have to pop it open so just think about having fluid and doing all that jazz and switching everything as you go like i have been on this car just kind of just plan on just replacing it as you go keep it clean um but i think it looks cool i mean having the drums back there when i did the suspension just made the whole thing I don't know, not look as as cool as it should have, but now it definitely gets some cool cool points and it's going to function a heck of a lot better and I can't wait to get it on the track. But yeah, stay tuned for uh, part two and then part three will be doing the bear brakes up front.